Hi friends and welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead. Today, I'm out here sitting in the sun because there's a dry spell for the rest of the week and there's sun for like a couple more hours. So I decided to sit outside and do this Q&A that basically it has only three questions. I have all the goats around me who wants to sit on my lap but today I sat on I sat on the chair so it's going to be interesting for them to try to get to me at least the older goats the baby ones don't care they just jump on my lap so you can probably hear them in the background you'll probably see them but I'm gonna try to answer those questions that I've been getting the most repeated on my channel and I thought today is the perfect day to answer them Number one is a question that I get all the time. Why don't you do things like X, you know, blue cactus dairy goats, weed them and reap, you name it, the bigger channels. Why don't I follow their advice? And there are a lot of things that I follow their advice on, I really do, uh, but there are some other things that I don't really feel the need to, uh, follow and it's based on experience now I feel like it kind of depends on what you want for your farm or for your homestead uh, what you're gonna do to your herd and how you're gonna manage it for example Crystal at Blue Cactus Dairy Goat she has amazing information that I go and refer to all the time but I really can't relate my small herd to hers I don't make the amount of soap that she makes and sells. I don't have as many doses as she has. I don't need a big stanchion for all the girls that are in milk. There are just a lot of things that we do things differently. So <laughs> despite the feeling that I'm not following her advice or not doing what she is Kind of sharing with everyone I do it's just that in a lot of things I try see how it works for our different herd for our smaller numbers and our different goals with our herd and then based on that I decide what to do or not with them a lot of the trial and error happens off camera which is something I need to mention if you guys been following me for a while, you know that some of the boys, actually two, this past getting season, that were very wild. And um, I share with you guys the humbling pen, where basically I put the boys with their dad for a few days, one more than the other, and that way they were humble enough to come back with their mom. Now, all of those things are things that, you know, a person like Crystal at Blue Cactus Dairy Goat is never going to have the time to do because she has a bigger herd and she has other goals. My goals are not only to produce enough girl to provide us with milk, also sharing our community, but also produce the healthiest and friendliest baby goats in our area. That's what I'm trying to do. That's one of my basic goals and so because of that i'm not thinking about shows i'm not thinking about other things that when you are purchasing a goat maybe from crystal or when you are a crystal then there are other things that are going to be more important to you and not really important to me not because i don't think they're important things i just think that they're not applicable to me <laughs> It's not that I'm not trying things, it's just that I'm not sharing every single thing that I'm trying because some things work, some other things don't. So when I find something that I'm doing often and or that I've tried and saw results, then um, I might include some footage and share it with you guys because everything is a trial and some things are errors and they just don't think that it's worth wasting your time watching something that is just not gonna work and I can quickly mention in a video of stuff that I've been trying or not trying so because of that I feel like 
when I can relate a lot to uh, Crystal's channel is when she's talking about the health, when she's talking about maintenance, when she's talking about shots, when she's talking about different things. And those videos, believe me, I watch them, I look for them. I think they're so informative. But some people think that because I don't do the same things that she does, is that, you know, that I'm doing something wrong. And honestly, um, I can assure you that my goats are happy, they're healthy, they're taken care of. So if I ever saw or if I ever felt the need to change something because they're either not happy or they're not healthy, I will totally do it. But I think after I share my last video of my connection with animals, if you haven't watched it, I'll put it on the top of the screen. I think in that video I'm able to share with you why I do things so differently. And to be honest with you, the only reason why I'm doing a channel is not only to kind of have this timeline in homesteading for me and the future, but it's also because my channel is so different compared to other channels. Like when I clean the barn, I vacuum the cobwebs. Um, I, you know, dust it. I use a blower to make sure that their patio is clean several times a day. I get it. I do things differently. And I don't feel the need to explain um, the, the basic reason behind it because I feel like it's pretty obvious. But for the size of my herd, if I have the time to go the extra mile, I always will. And I just think that for me, it's worth it. So, and so because of that, things will always be different around here. Goats are all different. Climate makes a big difference. We're not in Arizona. We are not in New Hampshire. We are not in Maine. We're in the Pacific Northwest. And when it's something that I feel like another person that lives in our area will be able to help, I definitely reach out. I definitely ask questions and I want to learn. I want to do better. I want to learn things. But it just in my head, in my brain, it doesn't make sense to follow something strictly for somebody else's experience. I always try to put it implemented in my herd see how it works and if it does then that's awesome I keep using it and if not then I move on and try something different it's just simple as that common sense using my brain that's why it's so different Another question that I get all the time is, why don't we have a house? And I feel like throughout my history here in the channel, I've explained that many, many times, but not everyone has watched every single video. So I'm gonna make it brief. When we moved here, the idea was to bring a modular home and we got approved for it. We were gonna do all the things. My husband was gonna get a job here specifically everything was in motion we picked the house we had everything they were going to do all the construction as far as the well as far as the septic as far as the address as far as everything but then a covid happened in march and we the job that my husband was going to do here which i'm not going to go into detail um didn't happen and the company didn't didn't happen as we planned um and uh, yeah, we ended up just moving. And when you're getting that kind of construction loan, which construction is included with your mortgage, you um, can, they check everything until last second and we knew that we needed to walk away from it. So it was very tough, but at the same time, um, the plan was to move. We already sold the house at that point in June of 2019. We were living in like an RV resort. You know, well, it was nice. We were paying rent, but it was nice. We had all the things. We had power. We had, you know, to dump. We had everything. And um, at that point, we were like, well, we have to go ahead and move. So we bought the trailer we had the rv with us we bought the trailer we lived in the trailer in utah in that rv resort then we moved it here we did a big move we brought everything from the house and little by little we started to set up here 
Now, the goal is still the same. We're still planning to bring the house, but we're doing everything with our own money. Like we're working, saving and doing things. So like this, this place didn't have power. And Gaia, <laughs> Gaia, yes you, don't mess with the gate. Gaia. So, um, the power was about $10,000. To put a, a pump in a well, it's about $10,000. To put a septic, it's about $8,000. So, if you start doing the math, it really takes a lot of money to get those things done. But, Gaia learned to open the gate and she's gonna get in so much trouble. And it really isn't something that we, you know, it's easy money to come by. So doing everything takes time. Um, we, at this point, have power um, and we have the well drilled and we're working on the pump, which is basically the other half of those $10,000. And we're trying to figure out something more temporary as far as pumping water out of our own well to use it right the second. So, yeah, doing things cash and doing things debt free really takes a lot of commitment, sacrifice. And if I'm being honest, a lot of um, goals you have to have in order to do it. So, for us, not having a house is a big motivator to do things and to save and to try to be smart with our money because you know not having a house is not easy it really isn't easy uh we lived in this property here two years without power and we use four like cheaper solar panels we got from harbor freight we use um generator as you can probably imagine nobody can afford to run a generator for most of the day so we run it a couple of hours at night to recharge our batteries and watch <laughs> something like a dvd or something we did not have internet it's it's been such a learning experience and if there is interest i can do a video all about it but having all those struggles really helped us keep a perspective of what really is important in our lives and at this point when we moved to this property because a lot of people are like well you don't have a house but you have goats and you have this and you have that well when we moved here to our property we knew we wanted to homestead we wanted to start somewhere and despite the fact that we do things slower because it does take me a lot of time to kind of adjust to changes and to make sure that you know I have one system a hundred percent master before I move on to another one which I'm talking about animals then it really makes a it makes it harder to move as fast as I want I would love to have rabbits I would love to have chickens I mean chickens I would love to do oh my gosh you guys are too old I would love to do all those things, but at the same time, I know that I don't have everything that I need to do it successfully. Not right at this second, because my priorities are somewhere else. And where you put your money when you're trying to save really makes a difference. And I do know I want to grow my own meat. I mean, I want to produce as much food as I can, but I also would love to have a house. So. Are you homeless? I guess that was a question. Uh, if you're talking about a house, a structure, yeah, I am. Uh, but I feel 100% blessed because I have a property that I don't make payments on. I have a trailer that I made into my own home. And if you go in, you, you can't, I mean, it really doesn't look like a travel trailer because I took the time to make it homey and warm and you know just kind of the perfect place to spend time as a family so yeah am i homeless i guess but i'm not on the streets i have lots of places where i can be here in my land i have an awesome community awesome church awesome people around us neighbors and i just wouldn't change it for the world do i regret it no not for one second actually my son came to visit 
a couple of weekends ago and um he was asking me, Mom, if you could go back to Utah and have your house paid off and I don't know, he was putting me like in a really tough situation where like uh it would be hard to say no to this, but I really wouldn't come back because I wasn't happy. I didn't enjoy where I lived. I was most of the time inside because in the summer it's too hot and in the winter it's too cold. And it really I want to be and live an outdoor lifestyle. You're very pretty. But you don't like when I pet your ears. Can I touch your ears? They're pretty. Pretty ears. <laughs> so, you know, I am where I want to be. This was a calculated decision. This was not because I had nowhere else to go. My husband could have stayed in his really well-paying job in Utah uh, for, you know, ever. We could have stayed in that every resort um, and saved more money. But the main goal of moving here was to start our homesteading journey start somewhere and start to develop little by little and i think that's what we're doing and i'm pretty happy with it i was telling somebody the other day that it's funny how when you're happy everything makes you happy like even the simple things in like in life like i don't know having breakfast together um i don't know a sunday dinner a friday pizza night wherever it is you're looking forward to those simple things that really cost no money and that you're even at home but you can't wait to do with the people you love so i guess that's my second question i guess you should know that we do story time in the afternoon and so when i talk i think that they think i'm talking to them that little white girl, Ava, she's a little Annie, she's the loudest. And the last question is something that I was asked and I even asked Heather at Sage and Stone Homestead and they were trying to bite my camera. But they were asking me if there's any other channels that I used to watch before I moved here and now I don't. And it kind of ties to the first question. Yeah, I guess there are some channels that I used to watch that I don't watch anymore. Like I would watch homesteady and I don't watch it this is something that Heather uh, mentioned in her video too I, I used to watch them I used to follow their podcast I don't do it anymore um, and it's not because there's something wrong with the channel or that I don't like them anymore it's just that I try to find channels that I can relate to where I am right now it is very easy to get discouraged when you watch a channel that for example if we're talking about gardening they tell you how you need a ton of compost that you need garden beds or that you need to till or that you need to work five years on your soil before you can have a really good garden and all those things to me in particular are very discouraging so because of that I try to find channels that encourage me to keep going and I most of the time find it and I'm gonna link some channels in one of the questions i'm gonna pin a comment and uh, i'm gonna put a few channels that i follow like some of the channels that i follow they have 300 subscribers um, i think i want to follow one channel that they have 89 subscribers and i found a lot of helpful information in their videos like some of the things I can't really relate to them and that's okay but there are some other videos where I'm like oh my gosh that makes so much sense now I know what to try next and really I get the inspiration from them because they are under similar circumstances and I'm not saying that they don't have a home or anything like that I'm just saying that they're living a similar lifestyle without um having all the resources or companies selling them stuff or sending them stuff so they can sell it it's like what can you do with what you already have and if you've been following my channel this um, goat shed was built with 100% uh, recycled materials that we recycle from a nearby farm uh, and I guess not 100% but because this outside part was the only thing 
I swear that the birds hate me. Um, but this at the roofing was the only thing that we bought. And I think um, maybe a couple of plywoods for the roof. That's pretty much all we spent in this. It did take us a lot of time. <coughs> because getting secondhand materials takes time to collect. Enough to build an entire house. It takes some time to collect. And it also um, took some time because... We still have to work, we still have to do things, and at the same time, we were using the weekends to get it done. It really did take a lot of time. I don't remember when we started, but we got the girls on April 21st, I think. And we barely had finished the inside. There was no fencing. I mean, it was just, just this. And I have a video about it if you want to check it out. I have it up here so you can see how this was built and how it looked on the inside but you know <laughs> relating to channels is what really want makes me want following these channels um, if they are not if I can't relate to them I don't watch them like I still watch bigger channels like Crystal at Blue Cactus Dairy Goat because she shares amazing information. I also share uh, Danelle at Widow Marie, but it's mostly for the entertaining part out of it because I know the goats, I know all the things that, you know, kind of reminds me things or periods when I was watching those videos in my life. And I just, you know, I still watch bigger channels, but it's hard for me to relate to them. For example, with Widom and Reap, they have this, I don't know, harvest something. It's a freeze-dry thing. I mean, I'm not going to buy that. I can't afford to buy that. It's like $4,000, $5,000. So when, our, when, those parts are part, when those parts of the videos come up, I watch it as an entertaining, entertaining thing. But really, I don't think that that's useful information at this point in my homesteading journey but they've been doing it for a while so of course they've been collecting stuff and they've been getting newer things and they've been trying different things and that's gonna happen at some point for us but that doesn't mean that I have to do it right now because I can't and so I'm trying to look at channels like Third Patch Heaven like um, Sage and Stone Homestead with Heather and a bunch of other smaller channels that they have such amazing ideas that I'm like, this is so overrated. Like bigger channels are overrated for their information sometimes because they are in a more entertaining category in my journey than, you know, useful information that I can use to fix something in my homestead. So I hope that yeah, I was able to <sighs> answer all your questions. I don't know how the light is going to be in this video because that's south and it's kind of on one side of my face and it looks kind of blue. Hopefully it's not too unwatchable this video and I can share it with you guys this week. Right now I'm giving Clara scratches. She scratches on my shoes and everything. The rest are little by little sitting down and enjoying the bit, the bit of sunshine that we're getting today. There's a lot that needs to happen today, so I thank you for being here. If you don't mind, I think if you enjoyed my content, please remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment down below. If you're new, especially, let me know so I can give you the welcome. And if you've been here for a while, thank you for coming back. I always enjoy reading your comments, so I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Oh my gosh, you guys, can I get a thumbnail without having all this... As spectators, <laughs> Ava. Yes, you. Such a cry baby. Not you. You never cry. You're such a good boy. And you don't cry either. I guess you take after your mama, my sweet Mocha. I think they take after you. Stop. She's also your mom, but you're a meanie. You don't, you're not sweet like your mom.